Okay, uh, what we are going to start doing here is I'm going to condense these down into like five minutes or less. I know that I've had some really long ones out there uh, when I first started doing these and what I've noticed is nobody really watches them. So I get that you click on this video, you clicked on this video, you wanna learn about fault lines and that's pretty much it. Uh, so the context of this is it's going to save you a lot of time. It is best practice. And personally for me, I wish I would have used it sooner and learned it sooner than I did. Uh, so what we have here is we have an example. I've set it up as a disclaimer here. Um, this is not the only way to do this. This is just like what I felt would be super beneficial for you to understand and learn. Um, if there's something else that you feel is better for you, go ahead and do that. I have a lot of questions about that on these videos. Um, this one's just a way that I'm doing it and a way you can do it if you'd like to. So let's jump into this. So a fault line, if you don't know what that is, for starting off, it's this red dotted line. Anything here that has this little circle after you have connected it to another element. So for this one example, we have a hard line. If I were to click here and drag, it will put that fault line. And the fault line as common sense, right? It's in case there is a fault that happens in your flow, you can route it in a new uh, direction to take care of that specific fault. Um, so we have this all set up. We have an update records happening. We have our fault line. And the first thing I'm going to do in this example is if I click into this, um, I have a text variable here. And I'm going to make an assignment to update that with update records element. And what that's going to do is it's going to let me know that the error happened at this element. And I'm going to use this specifically later for the email that I'm going to send out. After I've assigned that, I'm going to push the user over to a new screen. And that's going to do a couple things. It's one going, going to display an awesome, funny image like I usually do, and then typically what I like to do is have some type of like text that will pop up for the user. And in this case, it's letting them know that like, hey, like we know about it. We've sent an email out to our system admin. And I think that helps reassure them um, so that they don't feel like they broke it. And it's a better um, message than the pop up that they get saying an unhandled fault has occurred. Um, so I like to uh, pop those up, let the user know that we're in, we're taking care of it, and also give them a little glimpse by using flow dot fault message to let them know uh, what the error message could be. After that, we're going to go ahead and push that email to the system admin. I know that we already get an email, but this one is going to be a little more condensed and easy to understand. So in the body here, sorry, in the body, I've used an email text. That's this email text template. You can set this up with rich text. I have the flow, the element, the current user, the time, error message, the variable, letting us know, hey, this affected this opportunity, um, You know who the user is, the current time and date, uh, fault message, error location that we just made that assignment for, as well as the flow. After I've done that, I will then go ahead and create a case. That case is going to be nice because not only am I handling the fault, I am letting the user know, I'm sending an email to myself, and I'm going to create a case. If you use that, awesome. Create a case, log it away. That way you don't forget about it and you don't have to sort through all of your emails. So that's how you're gonna handle fault uh, messages and fault lines. Um, feel free to comment down below if you have any other suggestions or anything else you'd like me to go over.